Hey, good afternoon, everyone out there on the internet. This is Eric Doc Wright, military veteran and founder of Vets 2 PM. We are a virtual company and have been since our inception. And our mission is to help military veterans achieve meaningful, lucrative post-service careers. So we've heard from a couple different folks over the last two weeks, like, hey, doc, this is crazy, man. How are you guys still operating, right? And it's like, well, because we're a virtual company. And that's how they're like, holy cow, can, you know, how do you run a meeting? How do you do this? How do you do that? So we realized if, you know, instead of doing one-to-one, -one, we should do one-to-many. So I brought for your enjoyment this after, uh, today, I brought with me uh, a panel of experts who are going to talk to you about how we run Vets 2 PM virtually. All my employees are in a different state. Um, we do a Zoom meeting every week to have a staff meeting just like this. And uh, so we're going to show you from strategy all the way down to tactics, a how-to guide on how to run your company virtually if you find yourself locked down right now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So with that said, who else is on the horn with me there, JB? All right, so Jeremy out of Texas in the Virtual Training Center. You can see the background here. We'll talk more about that as we go forward. Uh, Air Force vet, 21 years, came on as the uh, Chief Operating Officer for Vets to PM, and I kind of handle things. You know, Doc has some great ideas. Then we got to turn them into something that we can put in the marketplace and then run our four-step proprietary process, which we'll talk about some more later, so I don't want to get into it too far. But that's who I am. I'm here because I had a, a, a pretty good career, then transitioned and had no idea what I wanted to do. Had, had no clue that project management was even out there. And what I realize now is it's just a fancy way of saying problem solver, right? And that was what I was good at in the service. So it helped me uh, kind of underpin on a career field that I wasn't even aware of and then become an expert in. So that's who I am. That's what I do. And I'll turn it over to Kelly. Hi there, I'm Kelly Wright. I'm the director of staff here at Best of PM. I uh, basically take care of all of the internal employee-oriented uh, things within the company. So, talking to our accountants, CP, you know, the CPA, bookkeeper, all of that good stuff. Taking care of HR, make sure we're in compliance with all of the different states that we employ people in, um, employees, full-time employees, and independent contractors. Um, basically, uh, just coordinate with all of the different remote workers that we use um, in our company day to day to help everything run. So um, I am the daughter of a retired uh, airman, and uh, my husband is retired or was uh, in the Navy and Army National Guard, um, Eric. <laughs> so. Um, I've been basically helping out since the beginning and um, just love being able to back Eric up on this awesome mission that he's started and take care of all of our people. Kathy? And I'm, thank you, Kelly. And I'm Kathy McClatt, Director of Career Services. I'm the daughter of an Army Reserve veteran. And uh, I've been in executive search and human resources my entire career, and I'm a professional resume writer. I helped somebody with a resume out of a courtesy who happened to be a veteran, who happened to be in one of Vets to PM's earliest uh, live virtual webinars, and uh, it changed my life. I've been with the company ever since. Um, so started out uh, just doing resumes and built career services from there. So uh, what we do is help corporate America solve their talent crises uh, by hiring veterans. And so we have a database of veterans. We offer many services to uh, companies to help them get connected with our alumni and with veterans in general who are in our database. Um, and gang, what you heard Kathy say is an absolute perfect segue into kind of our overview. So we at Vesta PM, considering most of us are military veterans, daughters of, spouses of, whatever, like we, you know, we, we all jumped into the gang for sure. So what we do is we, we subscribe to a doctrine. We have principles, we have values, we have a philosophy. We have a decision-making uh, tool that every employee is extremely familiar with. And so because of that doctrine, we're able to operate in a distributed environment. And those principles and the decision-making tool guide 
employee behavior so that we maintain organizational alignment, even though I've got folks all over the US, but we get them the agility and the autonomy they need down on the ground, out helping the customers within a 24 hour service call level uh, expectation so that we can stay lean, we can stay mean, we can stay, but yet still get mission done and, and have expectations of each other as team members about who's gonna do what. The four groups or topics that we're gonna to cover today for you is what's our philosophy? What allows us to run mean lean like that, right? Uh, what allows us to decentralize decision-making yet still make sure that decisions get made on a front line are congruent with the way we want them made as a company. We're gonna to talk to you about our people who, as you've already seen, are just amazing, uh, it, hands down the best team I've ever worked with. And we've got tools that we're gonna use. That's probably where most of you are gonna get the most value out of today. We're literally gonna walk you through the tactical tools and software and hardware and everything that we're using so you can say, okay, press stop, write that down. Let's go order four of those from Amazon or whatever. Cause uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but Amazon's still shipping stuff. So uh, we got that going for us. And then we're gonna show you some metrics, okay? Uh, all of this was in place before COVID hit. So when the stress test of COVID started smashing lots of other folks um, who we're all praying for, by the way, I mean, this is, this is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my lifetime, is how do you keep the company going? It's absolutely imperative that we keep revenue generated so we can keep employees employed. I mean, you know, what, 3 million unemployment cases last, last week alone, so that we can help ourselves and other companies adapt to what is going to be on the other side of this thing. I'm sure some kind of new normal until the next event hits. So that's what we want you to get out of this is how do you build for the new virtual environment so that when the next event hits, God forbid, it should be during your lifetime, right? It's not a reaction to the same type of event. You just, Hey, it's another thing, right? Speed bump car doesn't go off the cliff. Okay. So the learning objective is how to run or uh, uh, how to adapt and or start your company in a virtual manner uh, as we've done here. So we're going to talk about our business philosophy, some of the things we value, some of those guiding principles, cash on hand. We watch that like a lot. Either I or Kelly or Jeremy is looking at that every single day. Uh, I'm looking at the financial statements every single month. We show our folks the financial statements, right? So that they, if we're all playing the same game on the same team, we all ought to know what the score is and how close we are to the next down and how much time we got left in the third quarter and all of that stuff, basic stuff, all right? We're going to talk about our, our people and uh, the, the people up, the way we manage change. We believe that, you know, organizational change doesn't happen at the organizational level, Right? Organizational change is nothing more than the collective individual transitions, successful or not, of the employees in the organization. So that tenet of our philosophy alone right there keeps us focused on the people and that's where the rubber meets the road, all right? You've gotta have clear lines of communication. Sometimes it gets fuzzy. Hey, Jeremy, am I doing that? I don't know, I thought I was doing that on the meeting, but maybe I'm not doing that. So communications are hard enough in a distributed environment as it is, clear lines of communication, clear roles, clear responsibilities. If something changes, like, hey, that doesn't look normal. I don't think I'm supposed to be doing that. It's a quick email or it's a quick Slack comment or whatever. And we're going to show you some ways to communicate really fast. Process systems and tools, speaking of communicate really fast, we're going to show you the ones we actually use for what type of comms, when, like, like all of that stuff so that you get a feel for what this kind of really looks like to give you some ideas about how you might be able to adapt your company and your people to a virtual type environment like this. And then finally, you know, uh, Kelly and Jeremy will tell you, Kathy will tell you, you know, I'm a numbers guy, classically trained finance guy. I mean, I don't do anything without saying, hey, is it gonna help us help with that? Okay, it will, cool. How do we know when they're helped, right? What's my number? What am I looking at? Hey, how many dollars do you need to do that? And when will we know it's successful or not successful so we can go do something else successful, right? Super easy decision making. They already know what the decision criteria is before they start the conversation in the weekly meetings. All right. So this isn't a charity for us. This pays the bills and keeps the tribe fed. Um, and even during this kind of crisis, we're still keeping each other fed. Okay. So we wanted to share that with you today and help you do the same thing. Got to keep revenue flowing. Got to keep employees employed. Got to adapt to the new normal that's coming on the backside of this thing. 
All right. Gang, what do you think? Any questions, comments, thoughts for the good folks? I think you got it, Doc. And I think hitting the, you know, living the values is going to be really critical as we go through this. And the fact that we watch on a daily basis each of the employees living what they're talking about. And I don't want to get too far into it too early, but I think you, you definitely hit the main categories we're going to talk about are the learning objectives. All right. Very cool. Yep. Communicate culture clearly often. Okay. So our business philosophy, basic vision, basic mission, basic values. Gang, I'm not going to answer this question for you, but you're finding out right now, whether your mission, your vision, and your values, you're finding out whether those are platitudes hanging on a conference wall or whether your employees are living that stuff because your employees are distributed. They're trying to take care of kids getting school canceled for the rest of the year. They're, how do you get the dog to the vet when there's more than 10 people at the vet's office? So it's a social gathering. So I can't take the dog to the vet. Like everything, you know, we had a saying in the army, right? Like when you go to the field, everything is harder in the field, getting a drink, shaving, everything that is super easy in garrison is super hard in the field. Guess what? We're not in a garrison environment anymore. We're not in an office setting with AC eight to five normal expectations right? We are forward deployed in this, it, it, out in it, in the environment, trying to do daily stuff while still run a business. So mission, vets to PM, super easy. We help military veterans achieve meaningful, lucrative post-service careers. Super detailed, but lots of different ways we can pull that off and lots of different strategic partnerships we can make to get that done. Since we serve veterans, who we ultimately place into corporate America, who depends on us to get it right the first time, both of those demographics do, right? There's no, no, uh, no second chance to make a great first impression. It's absolutely imperative we live and die by our values. So we don't give our people 19 of them to have to remember when it's, they're in the middle of it. We do everything we do with integrity, we do it with commitment, and we do it with excellence. If we're gonna do it, we will get it done, integrity. We are committed to it, sold out, and we will do it as, as excellent as we possibly can do it, right? So that's the philosophy, that's our culture, and that drives our decision-making and our execution of our four-step process. It doesn't matter what, what pipeline, we take the veteran out of DOD service, uniform service, and put them into, to put them in a civilian career field, Kathy on the back end of this helping us out. We inspire them by showing them exactly how their military experience fits the career field they're targeting. We then train them to go get whatever credentials and or fill gaps in their knowledge that they may need. That take, typically takes 30, 60, 90 days. Then we, while they're doing the hard part and all the studying and stuff, we're writing resumes. They're taking module, uh, modularized learning and training sessions on how to develop interview skills, on how to use LinkedIn. We give them a LinkedIn makeover profile. We do all of that stuff to get them ready for the job market so that when they take the uniform off with the tabs and the ribbons and all that stuff and it goes away and it's just a suit and tie and a pocket square, how in the world do I operate? Here's your new context. And then step four, for life, we place them into corporate America. Gang, that's our business. We're still doing the same thing today that we were four weeks ago pre-COVID-19 because we've been doing it this way since we built the company. Okay? So your business philosophy really can guide your employees when they're not in the office, when you can't watch them, when you can't see them, right? And frankly, we could have an, we could have an argument offline about whether that's a great way to manage to start with, right? But regardless of how you manage, whatever your principles are, whatever your beliefs are, you have to make those clearly known to the folks co-laboring with you, collaborating with you to serve your customers, to keep revenue generating, to keep employees employed, to keep customers served, okay? That way they know how to behave when you're not around. Does that make sense? So here's some of the key ones we believe in. You already heard it, we watch cash on hand. I go talk to hundreds of business owners at a conference. Three weeks ago it happens. I say, hey, you have a business. Yes, I have a business. Great. Tell me what you do. Well, it's a little complex. Non-starter. Right there, you're going to put me on a treadmill. And, okay, great. Are you any good at it? What's your cash on hand? Uh, 
that's like driving a car without knowing how much gas is in the tank, man. Chances are really good. You're going to end up on a side of the road somewhere and not get into the destination. So we watch cash on hand. We live our values um, and we avoid complexity and calories. You ask me what we do for a living. I can tell you in nine seconds flat, right? Gang, what are some of the ones that you really feel like are kind of help guide your behavior and kind of help you uh, operate in alignment with the company, but yet have the autonomy and the agility you need to get your job done? I'll go there. Um, cool. I think I think the weekly meeting that we have just like this um, is really critical. Uh, I've worked. This is the first company that I've worked at uh, remotely, the way we're all just spread spread out. Most of the companies you don't have, you might have a department meeting every week, but you don't have a meeting with really all the key players every week. So, and I know some companies are bigger than others, uh, but the fact that we get together on Zoom and we use our cameras and we have focused time together, it's just that it's focused time. So we're prepared for it. Everybody, I suspect, just like me, mentally prepares for the meeting. Uh, we have certain things we go over regularly. Uh, so we know that that's expected of us, but but you prepare, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to share with the team? You know, because we dedicate that time, hour, hour and a half every week, uh, everybody's really focused during that time instead of dreading another meeting when you have to go into the boardroom with everybody all the time kind of thing. So, so I think the communication um, is really critical. So we use project management fundamentals. Every meeting, start, stop, discrete outcome. It has an agenda, has a plan, has an outcome, has a metric. We use project management fundamentals. And like Kathy said, everybody behaves like an adult. You know when the meeting is, you know what you need to do, you know what we're gonna brief, you know what we're gonna talk about, say your piece, everybody hears, everybody chips in, everybody goes back to business. JB? Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna combine a couple of them here. I think when we, I, I said it earlier, live in your values, right? And it kind of goes back to the business philosophy piece where you set up your vision, right? Which then gave us a mission. That mission really became like our cause, our calling for what we do on a daily. And then those, that your walking and living in those values have shaped the entire company, right? Anytime I come up with some kind of a, a scheme, and I don't mean like to sound derogatory, right? It was, hey, let's discount this. Let's go, let's go this way. Let's give it free. Uh, you come back and you say, okay, this is the values and this is the reason why we're doing it, right? We're going to have an upfront accurate pricing. The goods and services have a certain value and price to them. And we just, we hold the line, right? Because it's fair, it's transparent. Everybody knows that, hey, if that's the PM puts a price tag on it, it's not because we're trying to gouge the veteran. We're trying to ensure that we're giving you a proper value to service ratio. Also clearly, clearly communicates the values often, right? So I'm kind of hitting all three of these. You, we say it in every meeting, we talk about it daily. In every phone conversation that we've had across the last couple of years, some portion of our values is brought up and reiterated and maybe even translated in a different way, said a different way that where it, it just resonates for the scenario. So it's very scenario based doc. So I really appreciate that. And I think that helps me echo it out further to, to others in, in the way that I talk as well. And then Kelly, you had something? Yeah, the one that I think is definitely, one that definitely needs to be hit on is the higher professional help. Um, I know a lot of us have business education backgrounds, you know, your bachelor's degree is in a general business field, um, maybe you even have an MBA, but the fact is most of us haven't been practicing any of these specific fields every single day of our lives. So, um, you know, for us, a big thing I feel like that makes us comfortable and confident to be able to, um, you know, look at all of our data and make good projections and whatnot is the fact that we do have a CPA that prepares all of our taxes. We have somebody at their firm that does all of our bookkeeping. I work closely with them all the time. So it's not like you're going to completely have your hands off, but if you are, you know, using somebody that is, you know, in that field working it every single day, then you can feel a lot more confident that, you're making the right decisions, you're, um, you know, you're accounting for everything properly that goes with contracts. You want to have your lawyer look at your contracts. You don't want to just, you know, go on the internet and Google 
um, independent contractor agreement without somebody checking it out for you. It does cost money, obviously, but um, I know that that's one thing that's well worth it. And there's a lot of small businesses that are, you know, accounting firms or um, smaller lawyers that, you know, they are, are affordable and they'll work with small businesses. So it's not, it seems like it's a daunting thing, but it's definitely well worth uh, the peace of mind for sure. And for us, that's led us to be able to find other systems that are, um, you know, like our payroll system that's completely online and um, it's a bigger company, so we can use their resources as well. So they've introduced us to a lot of things, a lot of systems and um, other professionals too that can help us out in a lot of areas that, you know, we may know about, but we're not experts in for, you know, by any means. So. That's right. What's the old saying? If you think it's expensive to hire a professional, hire an amateur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, for sure. Kathy, you had something? Yes, about living your values. Um, I think everybody came, you're going to talk a little bit uh, about how everybody came to our company. Um, but we all live the same values and it's not just posted on a wall. Um, for instance, I came because I helped a veteran when I didn't have to. I did it because I wanted to and that's ingrained in the values that we say we have. And everybody in our company truly lives those values um, uh, in each and every day with what they're doing for the company, whatever their part in the company is. So it's really critical to have that live your values. Um, the culture in the company has to really resonate within each person. It can't be uh, just something on a wall because when times are tough like this, um, that's what bands us all together to support each other and put in the extra work that, that it requires to, to live on every day. Yeah, so what I, the takeaway from this slide for my managers watching, for my supervisors watching, for my execs watching would be, think about and codify what is our doctrine? What are our general principles and beliefs? How do we make decisions around here? And then constantly communicate that to your employees so that when you're not around, they can do the right thing. And it's aligned with what you need them to do and would like them to do. What's, you know, what General Eisenhower say, the, 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 the art of leadership is influencing others to do what you need them to do because they want to do it for you, right? So, you can, if managers, we set up the right ecosystem that allows them to use their expertise, their skills, their knowledge, their abilities, their experience uh, within these guiding principles and framework to make good decisions that align with the organization. Okay. Imagine how great life would be if they operated that way daily as a matter of course. And then, oh, by the way, when something goes wrong and everything goes south, they just continue operating like that. I've been losing lots of sleep since COVID-19 hit this country, but you know what? My folks getting mission done has not been even in the same zip code as the concerns I've been having. So like Kelly said, it allows me to focus on the problems that are like standing right in front of me because we've got the fundamentals locked down, right? We're blocking and tackling because everybody knows the drill. You know, in the military, we practice until, um, what is it, JB? We practice until it, it, we don't practice to get it right. We practice until you can't just do it wrong, right? That's right. You're training the way you fight so that when, you know, you hit outside garrison and you're in the, in the field, that it's just second nature, right? It's just the way you walk down the street. Yep. Yep. All right. So, you know, so this philosophy, these guiding principles help with the behavior, right? And it's the people that make up the organization's posture that, that make up the organization's stance towards its philosophy. So there's a couple things that we do that I would encourage you to think about. One is, you know, we talk about organizational change and we, and we tend to come at it, especially us PMs, very rationally, like, oh, here's the plan and we've got a clearly defined scope and here's our clearly defined estimated completion date and whatever. And we forget that the people in the middle of the change haven't been tended to. So I'm psychologically wired to fear loss and uh, greater than I fear uh, than I seek gain. So when you tell me I got to quit doing this thing and go do this other thing, but you can't tell me what the other thing is, I'm not letting go of this trapeze bar I got a hold of till you swing me another trapeze bar, right? Because if I let go, like now I'm in a free fall, right? Um, people are irrational, especially in times of duress. I mean, look at what happened in the stock market just three or four weeks ago, right? Some of the most precipitous plummets we've ever had. Why? Because people are selling fundamentally sound companies 
for bargain basement prices just because nobody's taking a cruise anymore and nobody's getting on an airplane. Guess what? It's still the same sound company it was before all this went down, right? They're just not generating any revenue right now. And because we don't know where they're going to start generating revenue, ah, everybody's freaking out, right? So the people up is what you need to focus on. There's people in the change. The successful change, the successful adaptation will be helping them individually make that leap push them a trapeze bar so they can let go of the old one and grab onto the new one, right? Hiring the right people. Everybody that works at Vesta PM earned their way onto the team. We were contractors first. We were founders first, not taking a paycheck. Uh, we were Kathy volunteering goods and services when nobody asked her to. And she just kind of found her way into the company that way. Um, and it's because the values speak to folks. The mission speaks to folks. They see each other live in the values and it, and, and it feels like when we were in the military, the person on my left, the person on my right, the person behind me and in front of me all have the same mission and we're all pulling in the same direction, right? And we know where everybody is lined up in the company, who's doing what, who's blocking, who's tackling, who's throwing the ball, who's the backup running back. Like we know where everybody else is at on the field, right? Which allows us to trust forward, which is different than a trust fall. Jeremy, how so? Well, I mean, you think about the old adage, right? You have to earn your trust. Well, if you hire professionals, if you treat people then and expect them to behave a certain way and it kind of ties into the values, right? You're hiring based on your known values. And obviously the company is going to affect the values and, and you're going to ingrain. But if we start with a really good foundation and you just trust ahead of time, let them fail. Don't expect them to fail. It be, you know, it's really a self-fulfilling prophecy if you continue to put someone under a microscope and you watch every little mistake they make, they're just going to keep making mistakes because your perception of them, you've basically forced them into that scenario. So if you just trust board, expect people to be um, adults and then give them that olive branch first, it gives them a chance to really grow into what that perfect employee would look like. So that's kind of what I, I mean here. You know, but, but JB makes a, 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 a latent point there too. Because we hire professionals, because we expect you to behave like an adult, because we expect you to live the values, we, we all the time make mistakes in execution, right? Hey, I don't see the ball. I got lost in the sun. It popped me in the forehead, right? And Kelly has to pick up slack or whatever while I'm down on the field. But, but that also means that you're expected to rise to the occasion, if you're not carrying your amount of water, somebody else on the team's carrying your water for you, right? So you either say, hey, I need some help carrying the water or hey, I need help with my technique or hey, I whatever, and we'll get you the help. So it's about, again, it's about setting up an ecosystem where the employee feels like they can fail execution, right? There's nothing that we can't fix if we break it. However, lapses in values, I chose to behave without integrity, I chose to mail it in and not be committed to excellence. Those are the things that we as company leaders are looking for. Those I can't train out of you. Those I can't help you with. If you make a conscious decision to violate our values and our philosophy and our, well, that's on you. And if you want to keep violating them, hey, that's okay too. Just go join a different tribe, right? JB? Yeah, I mean, you, you bring that up. It's a right, really good point. And then I had a high school coach that told me, you know, we can accept uh, physical errors, right? The ball hit you in the head because you just physically missed it. But we can't accept mental errors. And then later on in the military, I had a chief sit me down one time and we were talking about discipline and, and how we should deal with this individual's behavior. And he just asked me a really simple question. Was it an accident or was it negligent? If you know the right thing to do and you choose not to do it, that's negligence, right? If it's accidental, that's a whole different ball game, right? You can forgive it and you can make corrections based on it and you can learn from it so that you don't make that mistake again. So really good point, Doc. Yeah, so that's, so these are the guiding principles that are kind of driving behavior, but they also have to know your folks also have to be resilient and, and trust their processes and trust their tools, which means you have to design them for them and you have to involve them in the design of those processes. There's not one thing we do at Vets to PM that not everybody on this call has not been involved in and or voted on, right? So if Kathy says, hey, I want to do this new thing in career services, 
she turns to Kelly and says, what impact is that going to have on you and you on me? Jeremy, I would love to do this thing in career. She's responsible and accountable. Career service is her piece of the business. She's an adult. She's a professional. We trust her like, like all the values. She knows the decision-making criteria, but she also appreciates that when she operationalizes something over in career services, if Jeremy's the guy that's feeding her the talent, then we need to do that as a team, right? And, and imagine if your organization, that's one of the things that may come out of this on the new backside of normal is silos kind of go away, even though we're all geographically separated, right? Kathy knows what Jeremy's doing and needs and Jeremy knows what Kelly's doing and needs. And, and it's almost real time because of some of the communication tools that we're going to show you. Okay. So you actually breaks down silos, which is kind of opposite of what you think because well, Hey Eric, we're all sitting inside our own four walls right now. Sequestered. Like, what do you mean? Like we're not siloed. Okay. So now this is where I'm really going to let the gang shine. JB, go ahead. All right. So, I mean, right, right here, you got the four step process, right? It, it's a process. And then we run an inspiration where we try to really recruit you and, and show you, for example, for me, like I said earlier was, I didn't even know what, what, how to spell PMP or what project management was. I didn't even think it was a career field, but I found out. And now I realize doc has this great four step process. We inspire, then we train, right? Train and educate inter interchangeable. We make sure that you get the credential, the hot credential in the field that then we have to teach you how to chew bubble gum and walk, right? Belt's got to match the shoes. Get, if you got a pocket square, put it in, right? Look the part. And then we've got to place you because it doesn't matter how good the training was. A training shop without any placement is really, what are you going to do? You're going to hang a certificate on the I love me wall. That doesn't feed my family. I got to feed my family, which means I got to cash that first paycheck, which for me, that means success, right? I go to sleep at night knowing that we help people cash their first paycheck in different career fields. That's the first one. Yep. The clear tool. So there's a decision making tool, right? We have codified how do we make collective decisions at Vets to PM. So you heard Kathy earlier talk about this. She knows if she comes to me and says, Hey, Doc, we want to do this new thing in career services. She's the expert. She tells me what she wants to do. I don't tell her what to do. She's responsible for that line of business. But she knows the very first thing I'm going to say is, Hey, Kathy, how does it help me help a vet? Does it? If it's not a resounding immediate yes, we're, she's gonna, it, the, the conversation's gonna go sideways really fast and she's probably not gonna win the conversation. If she could say, you bet it does, boss, here's exactly how, and here's exactly why, and here's exactly how I'll know. I'm like, sold. What resources do you need from us? What do you need from Jeremy? What do you need from Kelly? Do you need staff? What do you need from me? Uh, you need marketing videos, like what do you need? And how long do you need it? You tell us what you need, and then that frames what we're doing. But she knows. She just goes right down the same four or five criteria we always have. So she knows what we expect. She knows how to get it done, and she knows what the decision-making criteria is. So when Kathy or Jeremy or Kelly or whatever comes to the executive steering group and says, here's what I propose, it's a pretty tight proposal right out of the gate, and we literally can go from concept to a conversation about what implementation might look like within the same meeting. It's amazing. So I saw several hands go up on that one. So Kathy and then JB. Right. So um, it's great because, you know, if I want to bring something to you and talk to you about it, I know, um, you know, it's got to meet mission. But the greatest thing about it is on the back end, it helps us make decisions before we even come to you. Um, we're not going to bring something to you if it doesn't meet our mission because a we don't want to do it if it doesn't meet our mission and b we know you're gonna you know run us through our paces and we're not gonna get anywhere anyway but it's it's kind of turned into um, how to plan your business how to plan what you're doing right um, if it meets our mission let let me think about this and and how can we capitalize on that for our people how can we capitalize on that for you know the job seekers and for the hiring companies you know how are we going to make this good for everybody so it, it's thought provoking yeah yeah for sure Kathy. And i think that's exactly what i was going to say so you kind of took it but i think it's about a focusing tool right it focuses your energy in a laser beam of where we're going and how we're going to get there, 
right? Don't even bring it to the table if it doesn't help a veteran achieve meaningful, lucrative post-service careers. That's it. And it, it's a simple question you ask yourself. And on the other side of the thing, cost saving, because you could associate the time, right? The time that it would take for us to pitch something to Doc, for us to get it out to the group, and then all to find out that it didn't really help. So that kind of took the words out of my mouth, Kathy. Back to you, Doc. Kelly? Yeah, I was just going to add to this section, too, because there's so many, all of us hear about so many exciting, fun opportunities and ideas from people every day. So it's really, uh, it's really difficult not to want to just do everything that you hear about, because there are so many cool initiatives and lots of ways that you could spend your time. But, you know, unfortunately, there's only 24 hours of the day. So you really do need to, you know, develop a system to where, okay, we're only going to spend brain power on this and, you know, just be able to funnel it down. So that way you're just not scattered and all over the place. It's very easy to get distracted, especially in the world now. So, uh, so yeah, having, um, having that criteria definitely, definitely helps keep, keep you on track. Kathy. And in our world of helping veterans, it's really easy to want to do anything you can do. And, um, and so well said, Kelly, it's so true because of, you know, also just the business that we're in. So um, it does help to keep yourself focused. Um, you can't do everything. So you have to focus on what meets the mission and what's going to do the best for everybody involved. Yep, yeah, and you'll notice, folks, as we're walking you through this, so we started with the fuzzy art stuff of running a company and the people therein, right? And now we're going to move to the tactical, right? So we're going to show you these tools, and they're going to get more techy, and they're going to get more discreet as we go from left to right across your screen. So the PACE and the digitized SOPs that live in our cloud, our SharePoint, are also there, and they're real-time access to all the people working in the company. So everybody knows what Jeremy's doing primary, alternate, right? Everybody knows what Kelly's doing primary and alternate. Everybody knows what Kathy's consulted on or, you know, contingency or whatever emergency so that when stuff happens that we weren't able to plan for, we're still not lighting our hair on fire. It's okay. This is not normal operations. Close the normal operations book and open the risk operations book. Okay. What's the contingency plan? What are we doing now? How are we doing it? And we're still using the same decision-making criteria to, to move towards it. And so what we're gonna talk about for the remainder of this slide is, is the tactical tools, software, hardware, et cetera, that you use to facilitate this communication of philosophy and behavior and decision-making, et cetera. Kathy. Yep, with the pace, I call it the hit by the bus in case I get hit by a bus. Yeah. Um, but the, the cool thing about our pace is that we built it together. We all collaborated to build it and, uh, and we refined it as we were doing it. And I'm not saying that I know it by heart, but I know enough about it that if something, you know, if somebody was out unexpectedly, yeah, I'd still reference the document, but we know how to just keep business flowing. So there's that behavior, there's that decision making, right? Guided by principles. I'm not gonna, we don't tell Kathy how to do something. Kathy figures it out, but she knows where the tools and the processes and the, and the, the principles are to help her go convert as much of the uncertainty and fuzziness around the decision in front of her to as much clarity and focus as she can and make a decision. And if the information changes later, we'll make another decision. But we're using the same processes and the same tools. So we also develop consistency. Kelly. Yeah, and that, that uh, kind of moves us along to the SOPs, if you don't mind me blending the two yeah, at the yeah. moment. But um, something that's super helpful is, you know, if you do know that somebody is going to be out and you're going to be covering for them, make quick video SOPs. So that way it's, everybody has visuals of you're going to go into this system, do this this way, make notes here, whatever. Um, I think the visual SOPs are much, much more helpful than just the written. Of course, the written will do the trick, but you don't need to do that anymore because you have Zoom and you have Vimeo and all these different tools that um, you can quickly create videos and just have the link popped right into your SOPs. Um, so that way, you know, if Jeremy is out of town, then I know how to do this, you know, particular function and he doesn't have to worry about it and, uh, you know, 
log on from the hotel every day or you know whatever no, that's a great point and in fact when you do them digital like that and it's video it's it's saying so many more words than just line item this line item that it's mm -hmm. it's experiential they get to actually see you perform it they, if you ever you know if you ever were in the military you remember the word ojt right on the job training it's just like shadowing it's just like uh you know have an apprentice with you but it's just digital and it's not a time sink for us because it's recorded it's sitting there and it's waiting right you have a question go click it a little three minute video and you've got it so great great ad kelly yeah. kathy Quick example, uh, I had to do something, I do something regularly that gets updated on our website. Jeremy had been doing it and I said, hey, you know, you don't need to keep doing that. Can you just show me? Within a couple of minutes, in came my email. There it was right in front of me uh, visually and I do it now. I reference it still, <laughs> but I know how to do it and I don't have to bother him because it's not his job. So it works really well. Kelly. Oh, that the hand went down. Okay, so then the collaboration part. So you'll see, I mean, literally, as we hired contractors and brought them onto the team, uh, first time I ever met Dwayne uh, Sowell, first time I ever met Stephen Crane, in real life, they'd been working with us for months as contractors and then hired on, and you meet them in a hotel lobby at some conference or something, like, you know, hugs and high fives and stuff all the way around, right? So it's these tools that we're getting ready to show you allow us to collaborate near real time the only thing that this team in front of you cannot do is I cannot walk over to Jeremy's desk in the morning and hand him a cup of Joe. I cannot have Krispy Kremes brought in and hand one of those to Kelly in the morning, right? But here's a quick tool technique for you. If it's donut day, I can have Krispy Kremes brought here and Jeremy can pick up some Krispy Kremes and Kathy can pick up some, those are donuts by the way, if you've never seen a Krispy Kreme. Kathy can pick them up and we can all sit on the meeting and have Krispy Kreme donuts and coffee. Are we in the same room? No. Does it look and feel like we might be? Meh. Yeah. Okay. So video conferencing for us is a platform that is key. For example, we say an email starts this whole chain. Hey, Jeremy, you know, we have been getting lots of emails and somebody said to us, we should be showing other folks how to do business collaboratively, right? There was a couple chain of emails, two or three. We figured out that that was probably going to be a longer conversation. So quit with the email, go to a real time comms thing. We come up on Zoom, we start talking. Within 15 minutes, we had a plan. We drop Zoom, start posting uh, cards on Trello, on our, con, our, our digital Kanban board, who's doing what, when, where, why, blah, 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 blah. Within what, Jeremy? Three, four hours, full blown yeah. course that we're shooting the next week on how to help people, right? Yeah, and that's what's so critical. And I think you, as you point out some of these examples, like Trello being a Kanban board, well, guess what else? It's free, right? You can use it in a free resource just to keep everybody on track, right? What are you doing? What's done? And what's in the queue to get going, right? So that's the, that's the real big benefit of having that Trello and it puts a collaboration piece for everybody to throw in documents, pictures, ideas, checklists, and then you move to uh, Slack, right? Where we need real-time communication. If you can't get on video, what's the next best thing is if I'm typing, I can see exactly what you're typing. We can all read the entire board at the same time. So we don't have to rehash out, oh, did I forward it? Did I forward it all? Did I reply? Did I reply all? You know, you got a lot of questions. It's fragmented conversations. And now I'm trying to make a decision based on partial information, which, you know, in the war, we don't want to do that. Right? We want all as many as much information as you can get in as much time. And that's what some of these collaboration tools do. That's right. So SharePoint for us, document repository, planning repository, you know, it's where the residue lives, right? It's the it's the knowledge database for us. Trello and is who's doing what type of stuff real time. Slack is comms about who's doing what on the Kanban cards so that we can keep that all straight while it's happening. The emails still happen, but they're more of a, uh, they're more of a record of what happened and how, so we can go back and do lessons learned later. Kelly. Um, I just wanted to add also that with Trello being a free collaboration tool for everyone, you know, for me personally, I keep a, 
a, a separate Trello board, you can do multiple. So for me individually, I can use that for my individual projects that I have going. So I can keep track of, okay, this is where I'm at on this um, in particular thing. So it's nice to be use it um, as an individual as well. Um, and then another thing I just wanted to add for the Slack, like currently, um, you know, you don't only have to use Slack within your organization. We are working with an independent contractor right now that's build, you know, doing some website work for us. So we have a whole separate Slack channel that, you know, their team is involved with as well. And you can, you know, just add the people who are involved in those specific projects to those channels. So not everybody's getting notified of everything. Um, and like I said, you don't have to only keep it to your own, you know, to your internal team, you can invite people outside as well that you might be collaborating with on other projects. That's right. We do that with vendors. We do that with contractors. So real-time comms, they can only see what is about that project, right? So again, trust, but verify, right? We trust them to do the job. Here's the communication tool we're going to use. It's real-time comms, right? Um, so it, we collaborate it near real time and because it's all electronic, right? You don't get mad at the person if they didn't walk down the hallway and tell you that instead of send you that on a Slack channel post or whatever, right? But it's happening in real time. So we're still getting the communication we need. Kathy. I was going to say the same thing Kelly said is that you can um, set up different teams in Slack, so you don't have to bother the whole company or the whole department. You can have just people who are working on whatever project uh, or whatever the case may be. And, um, and, you know, and that just streamlines it and makes it so much easier. Yeah. And then, so how do we capture this stuff? So we capture, as I said, on SharePoint, we have a website. Uh, we use LinkedIn almost exclusively to do all of our marketing. Our YouTube is where we house all of our videos and or SharePoint. Um, so for us, it's, it really is these cards that you see in front of you. What is it that we're trying to do? Okay, that's that bucket. Whatever is relevant to that goes, those items go in that bucket so that we're compartmentalized. And you heard Kelly with the slack. I mean, we think compartmentally so that we can make things here. We have an appreciation for what's going to happen downstream because we've been communicating with each other, but we don't necessarily have to ripple the entire system to do something local. Right. Um, and then maintain. So here, I'm going to let my experts on the horn share this with you. But we have a customer relations database. We have a way to communicate with our marketplace. We have a way to communicate with our accountants, with our attorneys, whatever. And again, so these aren't general things like, hey, well, why don't you uh, communicate with your CPO, CPA on Slack? Well, because we've got a tool that we can communicate with our CPA and their folks real time, especially like, let's say if you're trying to get, you know, calculations in on uh, COVID relief and that kind of stuff for your workforce. I mean, um, so there's, there's different tools here that we can use with external organizations that, that are kind of systems that they both can link up to and we're not having a VPN and you know, that's a, that's a big security concern right now is, hey, we don't have a VPN. How do I get information to people? It's not secure. You know, it, is it locked down in the cloud? Whatever. So, uh, gang, you can walk them through the, the maintain. So I'll start with, um, I'll let Jeremy and Kelly talk more about active campaign since, since they manage that more, but I use Zoho. Um, any recruiter knows about an applicant tracking system, but, but Zoho is more than that. It's also a CRM. So I keep track of every student alumni that we have who turns into a candidate, plus all the additional candidates who come in. We have almost 4,000. So I'm managing that. Uh, but I also can, uh, I keep track of uh, career services, prospect, employer, partner companies. I keep track of um, emails that I send. I, it's integrated with our website for job postings. So I go to a client company in Zoho. I post the job. Uh, it goes on our website because it's all connected. So um, these, you know, and, and Zoho, we, we looked at a lot of uh, applicant tracking systems and we chose Zoho because A, it's affordable and B, it was customizable and it can integrate with things like ActiveCampaign, which um, I'll let Jeremy and or Kelly talk about. 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, so you're right. I mean, what we do is we have several different systems and I don't want to back it up too far, but when you get into the capturing, right, we have our website, we've got YouTube, we've got LinkedIn, and it's like a bunch of atoms fired off into the universe. Well, we need some kind of gravitational pull to bring this all back in. And that's where we capture this stuff and we put it and then we got to maintain it. So the maintenance portion really is all about organizing thought. You can have a bunch of like brainstorm session, randomized ideas. We got to organize them and tag them and category them that way that we can reach out to their individualized needs. So that's the real difference when you're talking about from a customer's perspective, if I can treat you the way you want it to be treated, then we win, right? Together, we get to, we get to better serve and save time. So we utilize active campaign for emailing because we can send out mass emails for things that are happening in the company. Like we just had a partnership with a company and now they're providing a service and we're still paying for it, but we're getting a discount. So it helps the customer. So we want, you know, it's about a strategic partnership and it's all collaborated, captured and maintained within some of these resources. And we use active campaign. Um, Kathy uses uh, Zoho Recruit. But we also have other little tools here and there. But the idea is if you, if you can harness and maintain your contacts and treat them the way they want to be treated, I think it's a better experience for both the business and the client. Anything you want to add to that, Kelly? Yeah, I, I was just wanted to add that, um, you know, a lot of these systems, I know in, initially, you know, back in the beginning, I was running all of this stuff on an ridiculously large Excel spreadsheet thinking, okay, I'm saving money for one. And, um, you know, I'm familiar with Excel. Everybody knows how to use that. So you can do a lot of things with it. Um, but you know, once we got to about a thousand students or so, it was not manageable really anymore. Not, I mean, it wasn't ideal. Um, and I think one of the biggest reasons that, uh, you know, it took so long for us to move along was just thinking that it was going to be incredibly expensive. And I just wanted to point out, it's not most of these companies, they price everything in a tiered way so that, you know, you're only using, or you're only paying what you're using for. So it's based off of the amount of users you have, or um, maybe the amount of contacts you have, things of that nature. So if you think it's expensive, you should just check it out. I just wanted to point that out because um, really it's much more manageable. These people are, uh, these companies are, you know, um, doing this service for a ton of people. So it drives the cost per, you know, for us down. Um, and, you know, once you get it set up, uh, it's all automated for them. So they can provide this stuff for fairly inexpensive. Um, and typically they have really good customer service representatives that can help you set things up. Um, so it's not nearly as intimidating as it might seem initially if you are originally coming from old school Excel, like, <laughs> like we were. I remember that Excel spreadsheet, Kelly. <laughs> um, yes, I spent a lot of time with it. <laughs> um, but one of the great things is that, and I know we touched on these things, I think, but these systems talk to each other. And, um, and that's great because when a new student registers, it goes into Zoho from Active Campaign, and then I'm triggered to do things. But the greatest thing about all of these systems, and I'm sure most of them out there, is that the automations are amazing. Um, when A happens, B gets triggered, and then you don't have to spend time doing it. Um, you know, you just have to just make sure that that's always flowing and no glitches have happened. And it has been an incredible time saver for me. And I think everybody else on the team who has tasks that we have to do at certain, you know, stages of, of our students or candidates, um, you know, life cycle with us. So, so that's really key. And it helps with risk too, right? So uh, these are all locked in these individual little clouds that that company is securing because their reputation rests on it. So for us, it minimizes the overall risk for all of this data and stuff because our, our you know, if you're like me, I mean, if my information got hacked in the first DOD one and then in the VA one and then in the credit card one. I mean, so, when it, you know, people want stuff on me, it's out there, right? But the point is, is that we're not doing that to our folks, right? This stuff is locked in the respective clouds and the systems talk. Um, so we don't have to do all the expensive VPNs and all of the, 
cyber stuff that you would think or that you may be sitting in the office thinking, wow, how in the world am I going to get this data file or that data file or that system? And uh, like Kelly said, think about what it is you're trying to do. What is the objective? What systems out there are that, that, that can help you do that stuff? And then the questions you can ask them is, okay, so here's what I'm trying to do. You can do that. Great. Here's who's doing this piece of my business. How are you two going to help me do that? Right. So that you can kind of just ride herd on everything and make sure that everything talks to each other like you need it to. Jeremy. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, I think uh, moving from there is you, you hit a great piece with the, the risk side, the time saving, and then the collectiveness, right. And how we can uh, manage a lot of data sets in a very streamlined method. So I think that's the, the big part. And then you got to do something with it, right? As, as you move into the analytics piece, we got to start to look at what's that customer feedback? What's that customer saying so that they do get that individualized consideration? So we put out a survey. That survey is tied to their completion. So everybody's taking it, whether they take it serious or not, we can't control. But we're getting feedback from every single customer, how we're doing. What would they like to improve upon? What was their experience like? And so that we can mold each and every experience based on what is, would be a best case scenario for them, right? And then echo it out further to, the, to our next potential customer. So for example, when I went through uh, the Vets to PM pipeline, you know, there were certain things and there were certain others. And then I gave feedback, other people gave feedback, Doc took it to heart, literally reads every survey and actions upon it. And now the experience is completely different for a student for the better in my belief. Yep. So we've, so now we've kind of moved into, you know, philosophy and behavior and decision-making to how do we capture it? How do we make it? How do we communicate it? We're communicating near real time. Um, and if you can't get on a zoom, we're going to the Slack, we're going to whatever. Uh, and then, so that brings us to the actual hardware. So just a couple high level things here. You know, if you're going to meet, have an agenda. If you decide that, hey, we, we, we got to solve something, we got to brainstorm something, we got to make a decision on something, let's get on a Zoom real quick. I just need 10 minutes. Here's the quick decision point. Here's the quick whatever, right? It just makes it more paramount that you don't meet to just meet. Because I could be in Slack, I could be on Trello, I could be doing a project, I could be shooting a video. So here's the actual stuff you need. Every employee on your team should have a microphone whether it's their earbuds for their phone or an external mic uh, like this or whatever, you got to have a mic. You need to have a camera because you've got to maintain the personal contact, right? That's what people are missing. Everybody's like, yay, we're working from home now. Yay, we're never going back. But look at all the articles on LinkedIn about, oh, I'm so sad because I'm working from home. Like I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a schedule and I don't know what to do with the dog. And it's, for people who haven't worked this way, it's, it's upside down. It's a new normal. And there was no training on here's how you're going to adapt. It was, hey, guess what? We're not coming in the office for the next 47 days, starting yesterday when you left the office. Good luck, right? So if you've got to communicate, right, make it scheduled, make it quick, make it effective because there's going to be dogs. There's going to be kids. There's going to be cats. There's going to be, you know, people showing up to still like driving by with the street sweepers and stuff, making noise. You got the windows open, whatever. So when you get on a video, here's the three things you need to focus on. It's got to be clearly lit, natural sunshine, natural sunshine, dining room table, whatever the lights from behind the camera. I was a welder in the Navy. I'm not a video pro guy. I'm not telling you something like I figured this all out on my own. I got a coach who taught me all this stuff and now we all do it. Look how well everybody's lit and nice clean backgrounds that aren't distracting and what a basic stuff. Well lit, clear sound, stable camera. Don't be taking meetings with your phone out like jogging around, right? Like making everybody in the meeting motion sick. That's crazy, right? Stable camera, clear lighting, crisp audio. When you do have to meet like this, we can get on, we could talk about something, we can take notes that will go put in the Trello uh, or the Kanban cards and then shut the meeting down. All right? So mic, camera, um, uh, clear, uh, good lighting, 
uh, of course, some kind of computer, laptop, whatever. You can, do, you can do a lot of meetings now on your smartphone, okay? Um, speakers, external monitors. Now, I know is not the time to be rushing out and buying a bunch of stuff because you're trying to conserve cash on hand so you can keep eating, right? But external monitors for our folks that work from home, which is all of us, we've had those for years, right? Because I work on a laptop on the airplane and it's this big. So when the guy in front of me leans his seat back, right? Like I can still use the keyboard and stuff. So I work on a laptop, but when I get home, I've got a monitor that I can plug it into. So I'm working on a nice big monitor, right? Okay. Um, what else gang is there? What else uh, should we be telling them about? Well, I think you, uh, you, it's a really good list. And I think that's, if you follow just that, you, you're really set up for success. And I think another point that you started to hit on that I just want to expand or unpack a little bit is it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't have to cost, you know, $230 for a mic or a $500 pro camera. We all, all four of us have different setups right now. I'm working off a Logitech uh, camera that's probably a year and a half, two years old. I've got a Yeti microphone, so the microphone's a little bit better than normal for uh, for me anyway, but I'm, I'm kind of a low talker. I tend to mumble a little bit, so I need that better pickup. Uh, Kelly, she's working off of her laptop, so that's a laptop camera, laptop mic. Uh, Kathy, she's got you know earphones and different mics set up, but I think you're going to see that it's all coming out pretty well, and it's and it's not a lot of procurement. Just like Doc said, you don't have to go out and rebuy this stuff. You probably have enough stuff at home. And if you want to optimize it, get a couple monitors. I personally use three, right? I got my four one, my one on the left and the one on the right. I'm not saying everybody has to have it. There's a law of diminishing returns. My eyeballs can only look at one thing at one time, but I don't have to keep bringing up new windows. So I think that hits the hardware piece for me. But that's because you keep 97 windows open at a time, Verdict. <laughs> I do for sure. Okay, cool. So, and you know, so we talked about how we use email. We still use it. We talked about other forms of comms. So you must be thinking if you're like me, ask Jeremy, if you're like me, it's like, oh man, like I've got to control another account. I've got to like log on to one more thing. Thanks a lot, Burdick. All of this stuff, like Kelly said, it talks. So you go into Slack, you can pick which work area you want to go in. Hey, on this one, I need to go here. On this one, when I'm logging in, I'm going to go here. And then you, you go on to the Trello. Hey, I can use this Trello card or that Trello card, right? I just need to figure out which workspace I want to go into. So really, you're just managing workspaces. So Kanban is for visual pro doing project work and deliverables. Trello is for real-time, uh, Slack is for real-time comms while we're working on stuff on the Kanban. Emails is for corporate comms to kind of keep records and make sure everybody's getting like high level, you know, information. Um, and then the other systems we were talking about that we can use to talk. Anything else before we leave this slide on processes and tools game? Um, just real quick to hit on the um, automating portion, the invoicing, bookkeeping, emailing, all of that good stuff. Um, I just wanted to reiterate the systems that you can use now are really just incredibly easy to use, self-service. So on the internal portion of the company, you know, your HR stuff, your payroll stuff, um, you know, there's several companies out there that make it very simple for you. We use Gusto. It's very easy to set up to onboard. You can get prompted so you know you're opening the right accounts in the right states every time you hire a new person. If you're, we're spread all over the United States. So every time somebody new comes on, it's a whole new process. Um, but if you, you know, stick with these kinds of companies, then you're not, you're spending a minimum amount of money, but you're still getting an HR professional to help you out if you're a small business and maybe you don't, ha aren't big enough to hire a full time HR person, but um, you need the guidance. And of course you want to stay in compliance. So definitely check out those, you know, the gustos for uh, H for HR stuff, payroll. Um, there's mul like I said, multiple ones out there. Um, obviously your accounting software, you can automate a lot of things in there to where transactions are coming in. And if they're repeat ones, you can just make them, you know, automate everything to make it go straight to the right account every time. Um, so just take advantage of all of that stuff. It's amazing how much time you'll save. 
And Kelly, we use which one for the accounting? Um, for our accounting, we use zero. QuickBooks is a really popular one, of course, um, that's been around for a long time. There's several out there. We like zero. It's kind of a, you know, a newer one integrates with Stripe payment processors. Um, it, it does a lot of the things that we personally needed, um, but there's a lot of them. Oh, there's a lot out there. So. Yep. 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 Okay, cool. And then, so performance metrics, right? So again, while we're in this fog of war that's all going down real time, you're not trying to focus on every single one of the 97 systems in your company. How much fuel do we have in the tank? What's our altitude? What's our airspeed? Like basic stuff to keep the car on the road, plane in the air, whatever analogy you like. So at Vets to PM, we actually use the financial statements. Now, I know a lot of companies, a lot of execs are freaking out, right? Like, hey, you gotta be kidding. So first of all, remember, we hire adults, professionals, whatever. So you got an NDAA, we're under, or NDA, we're under contract, right? So if I show you the score for how we're doing, you don't go share that with your aunt at dinner or with your Facebook network of Twitter, like whatever. So, um, you know, we look at the financial statements and we use, in our humble opinion, the two that matter most. We look at our income statement. We look at our balance sheet, right? Like, are we keeping the doors on and the lights open? Are we growing the company for the future, okay? We look at service quality, 24-hour response, right? Um, Kathy's taking care of corporate executives. We're taking care of veterans. I mean, hey, man, I'll get to that in four days. We've just decided as a company that's, that's not how we behave. If I can't get to them, my out of office tells them exactly who they can go reach out to if they need to know something with signs inside of 24 hours, right? Um, we measure our values. Performance issues can always be tricky and sticky. Uh, ask Kelly and uh, Kathy, the HR gurus. But what I will tell you is because we talk about our values and we talk about our culture, that's how we measure performance. Hey, so I got a call from a customer. We need to talk about this thing. Cool. Mistake. Awesome. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, you chose not to contact the customer back for four days. And then when you contacted the customer back for four days, it was all the customer's fault. Is, is, is that what I heard? Okay. Is that commitment and excellence? And we let the adult professionals tell us how their performance is going. And we've got clear rules and regulations, right? You get to violate the values once in a, in a 90 day period. The second violation, that's a conscious violation. Now we get to have a conversation about why you chose to violate that thing. I'm not saying that, that we don't make mistakes around here. And I'm not saying that we're liberal folks, but not one of us on this call is a micromanager. We've got mission to be doing, right? We expect to be treated like adult professionals. I expect the same in kind. However, we also expect that if you're an adult professional and you were hired as such that you'll operate as one. And if you don't want to, that's fine. It's not an indictment on you. We still love you. Just you got to go do that with a different tribe. This tribe does it like this, the guiding principles, the infrastructure, all the stuff we've shown you. So um, employee driven metrics. I'll let some of the folks talk to you about that. And the balanced scorecard. Again, we don't use, you know, the Boston Consulting Group, we love that scorecard, but we don't make it an academic drill. We drill it down to, hey, what's a couple metrics for each line of business that really kind of help us make the business better? Or we can tell when the business isn't getting better, right? Uh, and so it's all about tailoring and scaling this stuff, which is going to take some brain power. How do we know what we're doing around here? What numbers do we put on it? How do, we, how do we communicate that that's what we value so people decide like that and then we, we, we let the folks do it. So uh, go ahead, gang, jump in here. All right, so for, for me at least, the employee-driven metrics portion was, was such a great like, implementation of bringing your own, uh, I guess your own jury to the fight, right? You set your metrics based on what you thought you could do and then we, were, we all collectively did this and we got around, you know, a virtual roundtable and everybody started saying, OK, I think I can get uh, X amount of customers per month. I think we can do it in this processing time. Right. So the service quality and the, the metrics start to mesh over. And that's kind of how we can uh, gauge how we're doing against what you thought you could do. Right. So if you let your people define the metrics, then they will 
kill themselves trying to hit them because they're, they're their own indictments, right? So that was the, I think the beautiful thing about that as well as it's very objective, right? There's not a lot of emotion to it. We either hit this metric or we don't. And then every single week, we put this on a dashboard for everybody to see. How are we doing? This is how our clients are doing. This is the amount of cash we're bringing in. This is the amount of projected based against our balance scorecard later that we talked about at a strategic interval, right? We said, we think we can do X number in revenue. How are we doing? Are we burning up to it? Are we projected to hit it? Well, maybe, or maybe not, right? So that's the, that's the big thing. We're all on the same sheet of music. And just like anybody who's ever been in a, a kayak or a rowboat is if everybody's going at the same rate, aiming towards that same, you know, point in the, the end of the coast there, then we get there. But if you got one person over there just driving away, the whole ship doesn't steer right. So that's kind of my, my two cents on that. And it's transparent. So if there's something on the Kanban board that Doc's two weeks late on, nobody on the team has a problem saying like, hey, Doc, man. So quit saying it's coming or quit saying it's late, brother. Do you want to make a new suspense date? Do you want to take it off the board? Like, what do you make a decision about it? Because keep continuing to push it is not committed to excellence. It's not, uh, you know, so, so that's how we really live this stuff every day instead of just hanging over the conference room that we don't have because it's a virtual conference room. Anyway, uh, Kathy and Kelly. So we don't beat each other up with a stick if we don't meet a metric, right? We set our own metrics. So like, like Jeremy said, you know, we move mountains to achieve those metrics, but if we don't achieve them, there's a reason. And so then we can all talk about those reasons and uh, either figure another way forward or adjust the metrics, right? So it's, it keeps the conversation going on why it's going well or why it's not and how we can make it go well or how we can make it better. Yep. Yeah, I think it's, and when we have discussions about it, it just provides a really good opportunity to, um, for everybody to throw in ideas. And I know it's helped us multiple times in the past where um, maybe a something isn't moving and so you know Dwayne or Garrick or Steven or will hop in and give a great idea that you know maybe whoever owned that did hadn't thought about that yet um so it's it's nice to have it out there for everybody to see and discuss and um you know collaborate on and and I can tell you um as as the founder one of the most amazing benefits that that I never would have seen so I wouldn't have known to write it down on paper is is it when the entire tribe is in the fight when you know it's all the same shared food source and like it really does operate like a family and when something like covid happens it's not me at 2:30 in the morning circling the drain in my head about oh my god how bad is this going to get it's team members stepping up saying, Doc, I feel you. Let's have a Zoom meeting. Or, hey, that's a great initiative, but we should talk about that to the team and get some input and brainstorm how to handle this thing. So it just creates bandwidth and capability to be agile and responsive to something as, you know, black swan event like this, this massive once in a lifetime event. Um, it's not you having to figure it out all on your own. It's a team of smart, committed people who know how to make decisions and know how to behave and know what the principles are so that we're all on the same team. And then they all come together and it makes problems solve quicker, faster, and the solutions are usually pretty dang effective. Um, so, you know, that's the takeaway then. You wanna think about, you've got some time on lockdown, if your governor's like my governor in Florida, it's not, it's not discretionary anymore. Y'all find someplace to hide for 30 days, period, right? Okay, so think about your business. What is it that you do? What are your guiding beliefs and principles? Why do you do that, right? How do you make decisions? How do your employees think that you all make decisions? Get together, codify that. So everybody can see it and say, okay, let's tweak it. Let's, okay, that's how we're gonna do this as a group. And then design the processes and the tech to support that philosophy and the execution around it. 
How do we communicate? How do we want to communicate? How fast do we need to be able to communicate? Hey, do we do project work or is this all operations? Hey, can we work from home or do we need to get people together in a, in a room once a week to have a talk and make sure it's less than 10 of us? Like whatever your company decides to need to, it needs to do to respond to this, think about what it does and how it does it and then set up an ecosystem that allows that to happen and then think about numbers that matter right now. I can tell you that we had lots of fun numbers that we wanted to do when we were all grown up someday until about two and a half weeks ago. And now it's, hey, everything we're doing has to help other companies keep their employees employed by keeping revenue on so that they can adapt to the new normal that's coming on the backside of this thing. And we cannot let our service levels drop to our men and women around this world still under oath defending our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and whatever is on the backside of this whole thing. So, you know, this is business. There's no time out, right? Like you're, we either can figure it out or you go under. We don't want to see that. We're a small, mid-sized business just like you. That's why we're doing this for you. Uh, we hope that you give us lots of feedback on this thing. Gang, going to go around the horn once before we get out of here. Right. So thanks. Thanks for spending your time with us. It's, it's so cool to be able to even collaborate and put into words, even just with this team. So uh, I'm, I'm getting value out of just listening and talking and collaborating. And that's what we do even with our meetings. So I, I know we hit on that uh, before is we almost force collaboration every single week, right? We talk about it. We open it up with, Hey, what's the good news going around the room? We talk about what's the next the best thing that's going uh, as far as metrics wise, what's the market's response to our website to, you know, financials. And then we move on to, Hey, what are we doing this week? Well, what are we doing over the next 90 days? So we got our 90 day outlook. If we don't have a plan for 90 days, that's strategic for now, then we shuffle it up. Right. Doc just did it here recently. Uh, I think it was last Tuesday. We said, listen, all these big strategic things that were out on the, the plan, when the, when the landscape changed, we've got to see the fight for what it is, right? We've got to see the trees for what it really is. And we need to bring in revenue now. So how do we do that? We shift focus, right? We re-jockey and make sure that we triage our 90-day plan. And then it turns into our seven-day plan. And then we go back around the room and we have everybody discuss each of those initiatives so that it's a collaborative environment. So that was my last one. I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to watch this video and we hope that it helps out. I agree. Um, thank you so much for taking the time and we hope that it was beneficial. And um, my two cents to piggyback off of uh, Jeremy is, is that same thing. I mean, you've seen how we have our meetings and you've probably felt the energy um, as we get to talking about things, the energy usually picks up and um, if you can only imagine the ideas that come, that come. And to be able to pivot the way we were able to pivot the last two and a half, three weeks um, is because of the way we meet regularly and we're all aware of every aspect of the company, how we interact, the financials, everything. And um, so we've been able to very quickly adapt to the new normal and um, you know, continue to forge forward in a focused way. And so maybe it's not gonna be COVID in six months, but it might be something else in your company that is gonna need that type of pivot. And um, if you're prepared, uh, it'll just make it that much easier. Kelly. Absolutely. Um, and to reiterate, uh, especially in situations like this, it, it's definitely nice to um, have those experts on hand and be able to reach out to your CPA or your finance advisor or um, your personal banker, your business banker, um, all of that network that, um, that specializes in each of those categories uh, just to make sure that you are making good choices, you know? So if you already have those things in place, then great. But if not, then um you know definitely definitely uh, reach out to all of your network to help you out in all of those areas so that way you can uh feel confident and sleep good at night knowing you're doing everything you can do you know that's right we've been using sports analogies the whole time so there we'll let coach kelly give you that last one is hey you know at the end of this man we can only do what we can do and then 
the rest of it is out of our hands, right? So uh, you just got to leave it all on the field, and we're all in this together. So we're here to help other companies generate revenue, to keep their employees employed, so that we can all kind of adapt to whatever the new normal looks like on the back side of this. So um, you can go to vets2pm.com. You can find any one of us there. You can reach out to us personally. Um, I will tell you, you heard us talk a lot about electronic communications and not much about the phone, <laughs> right? If I'm on a phone, it's because I'm shooting a video or something crazy like that, right? So uh, hit me, uh, hit us electronically with email. That's the best way to communicate, right? I checked that in the morning. I checked that at night. I've been up and at it since 0515, uh, shooting videos and checking emails and stuff like that. So communicate with us electronically. Uh, we, if the feedback is good on this, we're going to set up uh, bi-weekly coaching sessions, right? Where you can come in and have conversations and Q&A and all that stuff and figure out how to get this done as one big human tribe that we are. Um, so thanks everybody. We appreciate your time and your attendance and we look forward to your questions and the relationships that come out of this on the backside. Team, thanks so much for volunteering your time to get with us today and make this happen. Thanks.